Hi everyone, Melissa here. Uh, today I'm kind of going back to a little bit of a technical video. This is one I've been thinking about for a while now. I just kind of wanted to do a little video with some of the things that have been in my head of the biggest mistakes that I think new dippers make. Um, this is not going to be a how-to basics video. If you are a new dipper and you need a back to basics video with everything from step one to step Z, um, you can find my beginner's video, basic tips and tricks, and I go through everything from beginning to end. Um, this is just going to be some big, um, bigger topic things that I've noticed a lot of newer dippers don't realize or um, don't do. In fact, there are things that I didn't realize and that I didn't do when I first started dipping. Um, and they're very important to help your dip game improve. Very first thing um, where I'm going to start is the products themselves. Uh, what a lot of brand new dippers don't realize is that not all dip products are created equal. That goes for powders and that goes for liquids as well. I didn't realize this for about my, the first six months of my dipping. Um, I used some really big name products. I'm not going to name names because I'm not one to um, call brands out like that, but I use some larger name uh, brands and uh, while my application was okay, uh, I did have a lot of lumps and bumps and it, I had issues with smoothness and it wasn't until I found a smaller brand um, that I realized that some dips are smoother than others. Some dip powders are smoother than others. There are ratings as far as the dip base goes and some companies will buy the lower rated dip base to save money. Others will buy the higher rated to get better quality. I found that a lot of at-home brands that create their dips at home tend to have better quality. Um, some of the better quality dip brands that I have used are um, Double Dipped, CN Designer Dips, um, Cascade Colorworks, West Coast Dips, uh, brands like that, or there are others. I don't want to leave, you know, I'm not leaving anybody out if I didn't name your brand and I love you, you know, I love you. Um, but yes, so not all dip powders are created equal. You will be able to tell by the way it goes on, if it goes on chalky, if it goes on thick, lumpy, um, it is probably a lower quality base. Liquids are the other thing. Liquids are huge for good application. Now, and first time you use a brand new bottle of liquids, they could go on like magic. They could go on perfectly. When you'll really be able to tell quality is five or six uses into the bottle. Lower quality liquids will get glued shut. You won't be able to open them. They will start to thicken very easily. They will be very easily contaminated. By contaminated, I mean that the activator is what cures the base and the top coat. That means if activator gets in here, it will make the liquid thicken. Um, but some of these are not as prone to thickening or don't thicken as easily or as quickly as others. And you will find that some brands are just nicer to work with. And we all have preferences as far as thickness and thinness of the liquid itself goes. And that's not what I'm talking about. Um, I'm just talking about how easily they contaminate. These ones are my uh, favorite. They do not contaminate easily. I will um, always revert back to these because they were my magic liquids when I found them. Thing I want to discuss, and I apologize, yes, I am talking a lot in this video. I hope that is okay with people. Fast forward if you need to, but it's important information. Um, prepping your nails. Prepping your nails is not a one method fits all thing. Everybody has different levels of oiliness in their nails. Some people need more prep than others. Some people can use um, cuticle removers and things with oils in them and not have it affect their lifting. Other people, if you use a uh, cuticle softener or anything like that and you have a lot of lifting, try and omit that from your prep process. If you use complete dry prep method, meaning no oils, or anything like that and you still have lifting, you may need to buff at the nail more to get rid of the natural oils. 
what works for one person is not always going to work for the next person. You have to tailor it. You have to change things up and um, you'll find what works best for you. Next, before we get into the dipping, um, the foundation of your nails, the shape is super important and um, you have to realize that before you dip, you want to make sure your foundation, your shaping, um, that they are consistent, even. Yes, there is more shaping done after, but you want to have a good shape foundation to put your dip on top of to make the final result nice and clean. Okay, we're going to get into actually dipping now. <laughs> I'm going to be using um, West Coast Dips. No, not this one. This one. Perfectly Plum. Oh, look, it almost matches the, uh, <laughs> the mat. And then CN Designer Dips Velvet Crush using these two together. I think they're going to look beautiful. Again, I'm doing a very basic two color mani uh, because that is nice and easy for beginners and I want to do a solid and a glitter so they can cover that. I'm going to go ahead and just get started with my solid here. My main thing about application that is something that a lot of beginners make the mistake of is using too much liquid. Um, you want to wipe off as much as you can and when you wipe off make sure you're wiping it off inside the neck not on top because if you wipe off on top this stuff is basically the same stuff as super glue you are going to glue your top on um, but you want to, you do want to make sure that you wipe off a good amount of the liquid and not apply too much that's how you get really thick and clumpy layers. So you want to wipe off some from both sides of the brush so you don't have too much there. Now as far as applying and how to apply, the best way to apply to get a nice even layer, I go over that in my basic tips and tricks video so you can check that out if you need more details on that. We're just going to apply a nice thin layer on here. and then dip into the powder, though I like to lay in or pour over. So there you get a nice, thin, smooth, even layer with no wrinkling, no lumps or bumps that cause you a lot of problems in the end and just make you have to work harder to get a smooth result. This is my other magic tool. This is a um, water marbling tool. I'll just go ahead and mention this. I use it all the time if you see my videos to go around the cuticle line just to make sure it's clean. You can get those on Amazon. I got this one from Double Dip. Wipe off the excess powder. Oh, we missed a little, missed a little bit right there. It dried before I could get the powder on, but that's okay. It'll be covered up. Uh, next thing, you wanna make sure that you do enough layers you have to make sure that you do enough layers of dip. Three at the minimum is what I suggest. If you do too few, you will get cracking, chipping, um, lifting easier. It just, you need to make sure that you have enough. I generally do one more dip than I think I wanna do because I know I'm gonna file and I'm probably gonna file that last dip off. So I like to do four so that once I file down, I have the thickness of three. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip these completely four dips each.
Okay, next I'm gonna talk about glitter. I got my solid color down. Um, glitter is thicker. Glitter layers go on thicker than solid layers do. So you generally won't need as many coats to, to have the thickness you need. So I will be doing two dips of the glitter. Um, and you can't talk about glitter without talking about clear. You have to put clear over your glitters. This is something that was not in the instructions in my first dip kit. My first dip was a glitter. Clear was not in the instructions on my first dip kit. So a lot, I feel like a lot of beginner dippers don't know that you need to put clear over your glitter so that you can file them and get them a nice smooth surface. Um, and while we're talking about clear, we're going to go back to the idea that there are levels of quality for bases for dips and yep you guessed it that translates directly to the clear because the clear is the base not all brands of clear are created equal uh some will have cloudy spots some will have little speckles in them um you want to make sure that when you are encapsulating a glitter that you have a nice clear that's not going to cloud the glitter up and make it lose any of that sparkle. You want a nice, like really, really clear, clear. Double dipped is one of them. Um, it's my favorite. There are others out there that are fantastic. You just wanna make sure you have a good one. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do two dips of the glitter and then one of clear over the top. Okay, I went ahead and activated those. Um, and while I wait for those to dry, I'm gonna talk about the next little piece of advice. Um, the things that, the thing that I think a lot of new dippers don't do. Um, I know the first dip kit I got just came with this big buffing block and the instruction said, after you activate, wait two minutes and then just buff the heck out of your nail until you get a nice smooth surface and then you're ready to activate and top coat. Uh, it took a while for me to realize that that's, if you want a really smooth, clean shape, is not enough. You need to hand file. You need to hand file and buff. I do have a video of the do's and don'ts of hand filing dip powder, so you can look for that for me for more in-depth details on that. But a big mistake is thinking that you either don't need to file at all or you only need to buff the smurf the, the surface the smurfus the surface smooth um, because filing dip powder is a lot more than just a buffer so I'm gonna go ahead and these are dry I'm gonna go ahead and file these and buff them smooth
Okay, so I got those filed and buffed. I'm just gonna go ahead and activate and top coat them and then I just got one more, one more thing to talk about. Okay, and while that is drying, um, I'll just talk about the last thing I was thinking of that most new dippers do that they shouldn't, and that is being too hard on themselves. Uh, nobody is amazing at anything. Well, hardly anybody is ever amazing at anything when they first start doing it. I mean, this, this is my first dip powder application. That was in 2018. So, um... Yeah, it's not, nobody is perfect the first time they try something. Doing this process takes learning and it takes patience and it takes willingness to, um, to try and to keep trying and to make mistakes and to learn from them, just like everything else in life. So if you are new and you're having trouble, you're struggling, or you really have one aspect of dipping that you're having a hard time with, uh, just stick with it and look for youtubers out there that have advice for you if my advice if my advice isn't helping there are so many out there that can help but just stick with it and keep trying because you'll get it but uh yes anyway thank you so much for joining me today if you have any questions please leave them down below um don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel i appreciate it so much i appreciate all of you and i will see you next time